We've seen how soil strength is dependent on many factors. However, in practice, foundation design is often not dictated by the soil strength, but instead by its compressibility. A detailed study of soil compressibility shows there are three components that contribute to the overall ground movement. These are the immediate settlement, the consolidation settlement, and secondary compression, and together these give the total settlement. It's important that the engineer develops an understanding of these components and is capable of estimating the magnitude of total settlement in addition to any differential settlement that may occur over the building footprint. History has shown that it is not necessarily the magnitude of total settlement that causes structural problems, but rather the magnitude of differential settlement. Compare the damage of the following building which has experienced a differential settlement with that of the Palace of Fine Arts in Mexico City which experienced a total settlement of 4.6 metres but escaped any serious structural damage because the settlement was uniform. In this video we'll concentrate on estimating the magnitude of consolidation settlement due to construction activities. The reason for this is that consolidation settlements are generally the dominant component of the total settlement calculation, particularly in normally consolidated fine-grained soils. Such soils usually produce large amounts of settlement over a long period of time after construction is complete. Settlement in coarse-grained soils, on the other hand, generally are smaller and take place in a much quicker time, often during construction so they may be of much less of a concern. We can infer from this that consolidation settlement is a time-dependent process and therefore is controlled by the permeability of the soil. The following experiment is a useful way of visualizing the consolidation process. Imagine a sealed container filled with water and soil. If the soil skeleton is modeled by a spring, and the pore water is connected to a pressure gauge. The gauge will have an initial reading depending on the in-situ ground conditions. If a load F is now applied to the plunger and the drain remains closed, the reading on the pressure gauge will increase by an amount equal to the applied stress. And as water is incompressible, the length of the spring remains unchanged. If the drain is now opened, by an amount equal to the permeability of the soil. The water pressure slowly dissipates and the pressure gauge gradually reverts back to its initial value as the load from the piston is gradually transferred to the spring, causing it to compress. This of course is another way of expressing effective stress and the fact that all changes in soil behaviour, settlement in this case, is controlled by changes in effective stress. Incidentally, consolidation works in reverse. So if the drain was connected to a reservoir and the load on the piston removed, the soil would swell back but not to its original position as the soil would have undergone some irreversible movement as the grains were reconfigured into a denser configuration upon loading. It may be helpful if we start by discussing consolidation settlement in the context of soil developing strength. The two are often treated as independent events where in reality they are inextricably linked. Consider a soil element under the in situ stresses shown in A. If the element is subjected to increasing loading from a foundation, it will follow the stress path shown in blue. Plot B shows how the void ratio changes as the foundation stress is applied. In this case, the void ratio reduces by an amount delta E as the stress increases from stress 1 to stress 2. So changes in void ratio are related to soil settlement. The exact relationship can be established from the soil phase diagram introduced in our soil properties video. Recall we represented soil using a phase diagram. If we assume a saturated soil having a unit volume of solid particles as shown. The soil has an initial volume equal to 1 plus E0 and an initial height H0. 
If the soil is now subjected to the increase in stress from 1 to 2, shown earlier, it will undergo a change in height equal to delta H and a change in void ratio equal to delta E as the water is squeezed out at a rate consistent with the soil's permeability. Therefore, we can say delta H over H0 or the vertical strain is equal to delta E over 1 plus E0. Or putting it another way, the change in height or settlement is equal to H0 times delta E all over 1 plus E0. And this is the essence of the settlement calculation. Click here to continue with the next video.